Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Have you ever lost touch with someone who once meant the world to you? If you haven't, consider what it might be like to slowly drift out of each other's lives or to separate with the intention of keeping up the relationship, but never quite finding the time to do so. It's painful, right? You might feel guilt, disappointment, or regret about not reaching out. You might yearn for the connection you used to have, or the person you were during that time. Now imagine you learn that person is dying. How would you feel? What would you do? Well, if you're like Mitch Album, you'd reach out to reconnect. In Tuesdays with Maury, Album recounts an incredible final lesson between himself and an old professor of his, Maury. As Maury deals with a devastating disease, Album visits him every Tuesday during the professor's last three and a half months of life. The book is the final thesis they wrote together, and it covers topics including aging, family, and society. In this summary, we'll trace the men's special relationship from the beginning to the reconnection and, finally, the end. We'll delve into some of Maury's thoughts on living and dying. And as we do, you'll find new ways of thinking about life and what matters most. Chapter 1. The Old Relationship You know those student-teacher friendships depicted in movies or books? The ones with a quirky, lovable professor and an at-first reluctant student whose confidence blooms under the instructor's compassionate guidance? Maybe you had one yourself. Maybe you yearned for one. But Mitch Album actually experienced that very type of relationship with his university professor, Maury Schwartz. As one might expect, when Album first met Maury, he was reluctant to open up. But from the start, he knew something was different this wasn't going to be a typical, distance student-teacher relationship. Maury was the first instructor to ask Album whether he preferred Mitch or Mitchell. When Album responded that his friends called him Mitch, Maury answered that that was what he would call him too. And, the professor said, he hoped to one day be considered Album's friend himself. Maury taught classes in sociology, psychology, and the study of human relations. Album took them all. He hadn't realized the field of study existed before he took Maury's courses. Album graduated high school a year early, so he was younger than almost every student on campus. Granted, it was only a year difference, but remember how much older the kids in higher grades felt throughout school? Album dealt with his insecurity and discomfort at being younger by acting a little edgy, a little hard. Maury was the one to draw him out of himself while simultaneously building up his self-confidence. The duo met up nearly every Tuesday, sometimes just to eat together, sometimes to walk, and always to talk philosophy and life. At Maury's encouragement, Album wrote an honors thesis, something he hadn't even considered himself capable of. When Album graduated, he proudly introduced his parents to Maury, who he'd taken to calling coach, because that's what he was a bit of a life coach, before such a thing had become a popular profession. Album felt nervous yet excited to be graduating, to be joining the real world. He felt full of potential. And when Maury told him to stay in touch, he had no doubt that he would. We all know where this is going, don't we? Chapter 2 The Years Apart Fast forward 16 years from Album's college graduation, and he had most decidedly not kept in touch with his old professor. He'd also lost almost all the optimism he'd felt that day, so many years before. As he neared 40, he was experiencing anxiety about how his life was turning out and what the point of everything was. By society's popular criteria, Album's life was fantastic, he'd become a successful sports writer, made tons of money, bought fancy cars and a house, gotten married to a woman he loved. And yet Album couldn't help feeling he wasn't successful enough. He felt restless. He worried about aging out and being replaced by younger people. Album filled his time chasing accomplishment after accomplishment. He stayed focused on achieving so he didn't have time to think about how unsatisfied he was. 
In fact, for a while, he believed he was satisfied. Think about it, when you accomplish something, how do you feel? It's satisfying, right? At least at first. But how quickly does that feeling fade? How quickly do you fall back into the grind, working away toward the next task to be completed? Album was stuck in this cycle. To make matters worse, he'd lost contact with almost everyone from college all the people who'd influenced him and been part of his life during those years of incredible self-discovery and possibility. Including Maury. As Album's life expanded, Maury's wound down. It started slowly, a story that might sound familiar a few stumbles, difficulty breathing, issues with fatigue. He was in his seventies, so no one thought much of it. Eventually, though, Maury knew something was truly wrong. After numerous tests offered no answers, one doctor finally ran a muscle biopsy. Ultimately, this led to a diagnosis of ALS amyotrophic lateral sclerosis in the summer of 1994. ALS is also called Lou Gehrig's disease. It attacks the neurological system, slowly causing the body to lose the ability to control itself. Although Stephen Hawking, the famous physicist, survived for five decades after his ALS diagnosis, most people only survive up to five years after being diagnosed. Maury would end up living less than two. The professor grappled with this diagnosis, figuring out what it would mean for the rest of his life even as he started losing control of his body. Though he'd lost the ability to drive a car and needed a cane to walk, Maury taught one final class in the fall of 1994. He was determined not to leave this life before he had to. In fact, Maury asked his friends and family not to treat him any differently. He wanted to keep hearing their problems, keep visiting with them and discussing life. He started writing down bits of wisdom that came to him as he considered both life and his nearing death. One of his friends sent Maury's words to a reporter who published an article on him, which led to several appearances on television. And thus, one Friday night as album flipped through channels, he heard a TV show host mention Maury Schwartz. This is how Album learned his old professor was dying. Chapter 3 The New Relationship Have you ever heard news that utterly shock you? Felt the entire world as you know it begin to crumble? When Album learned of Maury's struggle with ALS, he went numb at first. Then, he set up a meeting. After 16 years, he wasn't sure how to feel about reconnecting besides guilty and awkward. He also felt embarrassed. Maury had once believed in him so much, but Album had lost touch with his younger self. He hoped he could fool his professor into thinking he was still that young, idealistic student. At least for the length of his visit. By the time they reconnected, Maury was in a wheelchair, his legs unable to support him. Album hugged his professor tightly, clinging to both his old coach and the memory of his younger self. That first visit, Maury started their conversation right off the bat he wanted to tell Album how it felt to be dying. Not the light chit-chat you might expect after so long apart, huh? But then, theirs had always been a relationship of deep conversation and connection. Although he didn't realize it at the time, Album's last class with his favorite professor had just begun. They talked for over two hours during that visit. Maury was candid about his situation he would eventually die by suffocation, his lungs losing the ability to function. But he didn't feel sorry for himself, which surprised Album. Instead, Maury wanted to appreciate life while he had it. He also wanted to give all he had to those around him for as long as he could. He talked about meaningful connections with others, how lucky he was to love and be loved by so many people. He mentioned the disconnect many people feel even as they pursue things they think are important. He touched on passion and devoting oneself to the things that give them a sense of purpose. As they spoke, Album felt everything the guilt and discomfort, yes, but also some of his old optimism and idealism. Upon his departure, his professor told him to come back and visit again. Album promised to do so 
though he couldn't help feeling uneasy remembering the last time he promised Mori to stay in touch. What do you think happened this time? Well, obviously we know he went back again, it's the premise of this whole story. But it was over a month later that Album actually returned. He flew to London for work, covering the Wimbledon tennis tournament. He felt disconnected, wondering at how deeply people actually cared about sports and media coverage of celebrities. A side note here Album later learned that Maury had continued to read newspapers even as he slowly lost ground to ALS. The professor liked keeping up with world events, even if he didn't desperately covet others' lives. Anyway, after Album returned home, he awoke to some unsettling news his union was on strike. He couldn't work, visit the office, or even contact anyone at his newspaper. After a week of feeling entirely unmoored, still digesting his conversation with Maury, he called up his former professor. They planned a visit for the following Tuesday. For 14 weeks, Album visited Maury every Tuesday. Maury told him to ask anything, and Album took him at his word. They covered topics like aging, society, and death. And together, they came up with the material for one last thesis about a meaningful life. We'll explore some of their conclusions in the following chapter. Chapter 4 Final Notes on Living How much time have you spent thinking about the meaning of life? Do you have a clear, guiding philosophy for living? Many of us today don't. Or we subscribe to societal views, which are often propagated by media and businesses that want us to continually buy new products. In fact, one of the biggest reasons Album struggled with his life before reconnecting with Mori was that he'd bought into society's lies about what a meaningful life entailed. He was so focused on his next success at work, or his next big purchase, that he didn't take the time to sit back and enjoy life or think about what was most meaningful to him. But as Album reconnected with his old professor, his thoughts changed. Maury's direct experience with dying gave him a unique perspective and he eagerly shared his knowledge with those still in the living stage of life. As we learned before, Maury asked those around him to not treat him differently. Sure, he eventually needed help getting dressed and going to the bathroom, but he didn't let that change the discussions and problem-sharing he had with others. He told his wife and his sons to continue living their lives, so that his own life would be the only one the disease took. Maury certainly had enough visitors and phone calls to keep him busy anyway, the many people whose lives he'd touched all wanted to connect at least once more before he died. At the end of his life, Maury could provide direct evidence of the benefits of valuing and working on love and connections with others. Many people today search for meaning in materialism, just as Album did before he reconnected with Maury. We place importance on having the nicest television or car or latest fashions. But as Maury saw in his last few months of life, it was the love and connection he experienced with those around him that brought the most joy and meaning to his days. This was one lesson Maury taught Album when your culture isn't working, when it's not providing you a fulfilling life, you have to be strong enough to turn away and create your own purpose and meaning. That could mean spending time with loved ones instead of working endless hours in the office. Or spending money on events and experiences with people you care about rather than on material objects. One way Mori went against traditional societal expectations was to hold a living funeral in the last half year of his life. He invited friends and loved ones over, and they shared their favorite memories with Mori and the lessons he taught them just as we do at traditional funerals. But because Mori was still alive, he got to experience and appreciate all the wonderful things people said about him. Does the idea of a living funeral make you feel a little uncomfortable? It's okay, that's part of what bucking society's trends does. But it also opens the door to feeling wonderful, beautiful emotions. Although Maury mourned his failing body, he looked at the experience of dying as another opportunity to give to and connect with those around him. Because of this, his last few months of life were full of not only tears but also love, connection, and joy. 
If we refocus our lives toward the things we find truly meaningful and toward the people we care about, we too can feel those rich, powerful emotions of fulfillment and happiness. Final Summary We know how this story ends. Maury died in November of 1995. His whole family was in the house, but he took his last breath at a time when no one was in his room. Album suspects his professor chose that moment specifically to spare his loved ones. An album? His life was forever changed by his relationship with his professor, his coach. He wrote and published Tuesdays with Maury, their final thesis together. He went on to reconnect with his earlier dream of becoming a musician and published many other books as well. What would you do if you weren't stuck in the cycle of chasing success? Who would you want around you as you were dying? As Maury taught Album, you can live a fulfilling, purposeful life. All it takes is refocusing on the people and things you truly care about. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.